This is the 2020 level 3 ELEC exam. So there's question one. Um, Tui is investigating LCR circuits. She sets up the circuit channel below using a sig signal generator and it's a voltage 60 volts, RMS and 50 hertz. Calculate the peak voltage of the supply. Um, so V peak um, is equal to uh, V RMS um, times root two. So it's just gonna be equal to 65 uh, times root two, and that equals 91.9 volts. So we've got 91.9, uh, let's round it up now, volts. So uh, VPK equals 91.9 volts, 3SF. Right, what do we got next? Uh, supply voltage in the circuit leads the circuit uh, by 35 degrees, the resistor has a resistance of, what's it, 150 ohms. Calculate the total impedance of the circuit. Phase diagram might be useful. Should, well, it is useful. Um, so here, I don't know, we'll just put a little dot in the center. This is gonna be the resistance. So I'll do this to scale. Um, so this is 150, so we'll make that, no, we'll make that three centimeters. Um, so each centimeter represents 50. Yeah, 50. Um, and we have the total impedance is 35 degrees in front. So that's gonna be something like, I don't know, up over here-ish. Oh, I'll do this 90 degrees, oops. Dot, 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 dot. And I'll just, I'll keep going up. Because I want this all to be perfectly to scale. So I don't know, there would be about 45 degrees. So 35 degrees-ish would be about here. There we go. This is R, this is Z, which is the impedance. Um, and this is 35 degrees, 35 degrees. So we can see that R and Z are related. This is the hypotenuse, this is the adjacent. So it's cos. Cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. In other words, which is equal to, what is it? Uh, R over Z. Oh, that's a weird looking Z. Um, let's shuffle that up a little bit. Uh, in other words, um, Z equals, what do you mean Z? R divided by cos theta, which equals 150. Yeah, 1.5 times 10 to the 2 is definitely 150, divided by cos 35, and that equals 183.1, so 183.116 ohms. So we've got Z down the bottom is equal to uh, 183 ohms, 183 ohms. Right, that's the total impedance of the, of the circuit, so it's like, all the resistances added up. So like the reactance of the capacitors and of the inductors. And just remember that the inductors lead the circuit. Um, and so this is XL, and the capacitors lag the circuit XC, just for brevity. Right, um, the inductor, oh, what is the circuit anyway? What have you got? Oh, there's an LCR circuit. Um, so I should probably write things on, oh, that's 150. The inductor has a inductance of that many Henry's. Um, calculate the total reactance of the circuit. De de uh, determine, by calculating the total reactance of the circuit, determine the capacitance of the capacitor. Didn't we totally find the total reactance of the, oh, reactance, what am I talking about? So that's the, yeah, okay. That is this here. So this here is the reactance, but we don't know. Okay, so I'll just quickly, um, the reactance X total is equal to the magnitude of XC minus XL. I mean, the order doesn't matter. But it's just the difference between the, the two reactances of the capacitor and the inductor. So I am going to have to, what will I do first? I'll find the total reactance of the circuit, which is just going to be the uh, opposite. 
So xt, xt is going to be, we're going to have the opposite and we'll use the, still use the adjacent because whatever, um, is equal to tan, the, wait, hold on, no, uh, xt is, okay, I'll, I've like skipped three steps, tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, the opposite is xt, which is a total reactance over the adjacent, which is R. Um, and I want to find XT, so I'll just quickly scribble that out. Um, the total reactance is equal to R tan theta, and that is equal to 105 ohms. Um, I'll just put 150 tan 35 equals, ugh, running out of space, 105 ohms. Um, I need to find the actual reactance of the inductor. So XL is equal to omega L, which is equal to 2 pi FL, which is equal to 2 pi times, what's the frequency? 50, I'm pretty sure it's just a 50 hertz switch. 50 times 0 0.38, 0. Um, and that is going to be equal to, I don't know what that is, I'll just do that. That's equal to 119.119.38 ohms. Just a little side note, because the total impedance leads the supply or leads the resistance, we know that XL is bigger than XC because these two vectors would add together to create this vector over here. So we know that XL is definitely bigger than XC um, and that's going to help us very soon. So we know that, uh, what do we got? X, X total is equal to XL minus, hold up, xc, c. In other words, and that makes this number positive. In other words, xc, so the reactance of the capacitor is equal to, uh, what is that equal to? I'll move, uh, it's equal to xl, minus xt, which is gonna be equal to uh, 119.38 minus 105, 105, uh, and that is gonna be equal to 14.38, so 14.38 ohms. Um, and now we're trying to find the capacitance of a capacitor. An easy way to do that, instead of using the capacitor, is just gonna be using uh, XC is equal to 1 over omega C. Um, in other words, we'll just flip both sides. Um, how am I going to do this? I'll move the times both sides by omega so we get and then flip it. So I'd have omega XC and this would have been equal to 1 over C but I'm going to go 1 over that to give me a C, and that's going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times 50, uh, keep going, times, what do we get, 14.38, and that'll give me how many farads it is, and then we get 2.21, 2.21, yeah, times 10 to the 4, negative 4 uh, farads, named after Michael Faraday, huzzah, that's actually quite a straightforward question, um, Things that you'd sort of need to know to do this question. You need to know that the reactance leads the capacitance. You need to know that it, like, this is the phaser. Um, the XL always points up, XC points down uh, to the right. Um, it rotates around like polar coordinate systems, so it goes anti-clockwise like that. Um, that's really about it. And these, all these vectors add together to create Z. Um, so this plus this plus this. So it's in saying that, this should be like uh, about that tall, and I'll just scribble that out, because this should subtract off this big vector to give this vector that all here, this vector from there to there. Um, anyway, um, explain what needs to be, what change needs to be made to the frequency 
of the signal generator to bring the circuit to resonance. Um, cool, so what am I looking at? The reactance of the capacitor is way less than the reactance of the inductor. Um, I can see that right now, because that and that. So I need to either A, decrease the reactance of the inductor to bring it closer to the reactance of the capacitor, or B, increase the reactance of the capacitor to bring it closer to the inductor. So to decrease the uh, reactance of the inductor, what I should really do is decrease the frequency. Um, so, yeah. Um, right, so I'll just pause and write it out. Right, so I've said at resonance, the total reactance is equal to zero, so xt equals zero. Thus, the reactance of the inductor is equal to the reactance of the capacitor. Um, as the reactance of the inductor is larger than the capacitor, and I'll just put like the XL is larger than the XC, in other words, 119 is definitely bigger than 114, the reactance of the inductor needs to be reduced. Um, to do this, the frequency must decrease, because I've just got XL equals omega L. Um, and then I just chuck this little tidbit. Um, when the frequency is decreased, the reactance of the inductor, so XL, will decrease. Um, and XC will increase um, as, ooh, 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 that should be XC, not XL. Um, the reactance of the capacitor is proportional to one over the frequency. I mean, I probably could have found the resonant frequency. I see they've done that in the answers, but that, that definitely answers the question. Um.